Hi, Matt. All right, mate. <laughs> nice to see you. How are nice you doing? Nice to see you again. Yeah, not too bad. How are Good. you? I'm very well, thank you. How's your stress level going at the minute? Um, hmm, manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was saying earlier, it, it sort of gets easier, but um, even though it gets easier, that, that's, that makes me uneasy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that the kind of the more you do things you think it's going to be smoother but then when you find a little bit of maybe five minutes spare time on your hands to like do a podcast with me or something like that you kind of go if something's not uh, have, I, have i forgotten something have yeah. I missing something? Oh, that, yeah it's, definitely yeah. feel like i've forgotten something probably yeah. have <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be easy kind of doing it the second time around time around in the same venue i guess yeah same venue same hotel yeah that makes life much easier yeah. definitely yeah. you kind of know how it's going to run when you did it back in um because you did it in pool and then cardiff and kind of switched between yeah. them was that yeah. always in the same venue we did cardiff twice at st david's hall and we did twice in the lighthouse in pool I yeah. think so yeah yeah it's got to make it a little bit easier I think too. yeah I'm pretty sure we did yeah um, but we keep changing things every single time yeah so we haven't we still haven't really got like a sort of well maybe we do now a kind of foundation yeah because um, oh no we've changed things again this time we've lowered the amount of main card fighters but we've increased the amount of prelim matches okay there's no interval in the main card this time because that yeah. didn't go, very, go down well with viewers apparently yeah. according okay. to the UFC alright okay yeah it might. It must be quite nice to have that sort of input from somebody like the UFC who are kind of watching kind of oh, eyes away from the project and, and really just kind of seeing everything overview and to get that feedback from them has that been quite helpful since the yeah. last one was the first time it was showed last one was the first time yeah we had a really nice email from them the next day saying um, love the show they wanted five more shows next year and we we Amazing. sort of went that's really awesome but there's absolutely no way we can do five yeah uh, we probably just about managed four yeah um yeah they loved it they i mean they gave us quite a lot of feedback uh in certain uh parts like of certain things like presentation and uh, yeah. pacing and stuff like that and yeah they gave us some pretty valuable feedback they um they did give it, they didn't give us numbers but they they kind of because they keep their numbers quite close to their chest but okay. they did say some very positive things which I probably can't really say but it did yeah, very well okay. in comparison to other shows okay that's yeah. good yeah yeah and I guess if it hadn't and although they keep the numbers close to their chest if it hadn't done very well you'd probably not yeah they would have just said thanks for that yeah like, yeah yeah don't See you call next us time. we'll call you yeah and yeah. um what was the motivation behind kind of putting the belts on the line this time um is it because the brand itself's growing and, and you're kind of thinking yeah we're going to do four this year and, and it's nice to put a bit of bit of gold around someone's waist yeah we want um one 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 problem we have when matchmaking is uh everybody's kind of bouncing around between different weights like some people uh -huh. do ibjjf some people do adcc some people do mma so we spent a long time thinking about what would be a good uh sort of weight system to settle on and yeah. we settled on MMA yeah because um, uh, we wanted to attract we, we want like MMA grapplers or really good jiu-jitsu people that are well established in MMA to be yeah. able to easily come across to Polaris yeah and then um, we kind of looked at all the weights that already exist in the IBJJF and a few of them do match up to or get close enough to like MMA weight classes. So oh. we set it like that. Yeah. And then the other reason is we can tell stories about like contenders and, you know, yeah. champions, former champions. And then, as I mentioned to you before, for news outlets and like media people to report on Polaris, it just makes it a lot easier for them to be able to refer to the champions or the contenders yeah. rather than just a bunch of like individual matches. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It creates a nice inbuilt storyline yeah. to it as well. Um, when you first kind of came up with the idea of Polaris before it was it even had a name and it was just let's do a really exciting jiu-jitsu thing in, in the UK um, did you kind of ever envision it would get this far did you always have grandiose plans for it or was it just something you thought we'll have a go at see how the first one goes and then I've, we've still got a mailing list in uh, MailChimp mm -hmm. that's called um, submission only interest or something and we right. sent out like a, a thing saying it's me and Ben from Scramble we sent yeah. out a thing saying that we were going to do a submission only like open tournament or something and register your interest. I think we had a couple of hundred emails that we were getting ready to, you know, when, if we ever came up with anything, we were yeah. going to send out. We got fairly, I think we had like a name for it and a, and a poster or something. Yeah. And then I think we I've told this story a few times. We went to the Europeans in Portugal. Yeah. 
met Tommy for the first time like okay. in person. Yeah. Had a big dinner, got got really drunk and then like <laughs> that was pretty much the beginning of uh yeah, Polaris. Of Polaris, great. Um what what year was that? When when did we start that, Gary? When did we go to the Euros together? Twenty fourteen? Yeah. Twenty fourteen. Yeah. So, it, like, as I said, did you did you kind of envision it would come this far? Did you have a four year plan for it, or was it just something that's grown and grown and grown? No, quite we've just we've just done we've just done it show by show, really. Yeah. And um, yeah, we've only had like the resources to do show by show. Yeah. Now we're um, looking we're looking to do, we're looking at the whole year this time for the first time. So like all yeah. four events. That must be quite nice to, to kind of be able to come into January and obviously if the back of the last one was in August. Yeah. And to kind of go, right, well, now we, we know where we're going with this. We've got a full year planned out. Yeah. Um, is it also four times the work? Yeah. It's going to be easier, hopefully. Like, now that we know that we're mega busy, everyone's kind of assigning people from their team to help out and stuff yeah. like that. So, like, we've got a couple of extra people in our office. Gareth's got a couple of people that can yeah. jump in it help with like graphics and logistics and stuff like that yeah so. yeah yeah because it is a bit a bit of a beast and obviously with us being involved with the social media last time and, and also this time you kind of obviously you ben and um and tatami obviously run very big ships anyway you know what i mean you, you have you're probably maxed out just doing what you do so mm. then you go oh, yeah i'm going to do a sub only tournament as well then where are all these kind of man hours going to come from yeah you know i mean it must be quite daunting yeah but we've all got the thought in the back of our head that it's going to be uh it's going to pay off you know yeah of yeah. course yeah 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 um has it worked out it's quite a nice platform to kind of show off your your branded athletes you know there's obviously there's always a nice chunk of uk grapplers and european grapplers that you that both companies sponsor um, and to really put them on the map do you think it's been helping the athletes out in terms of getting their, their yeah model? definitely yeah. yeah i mean the first like the first pool of people that we draw from is just people that we already know and work with. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. And that's like, cause we're putting so much into it. It's like a, a an added benefit that, um, our athletes yeah. get the exposure yeah. yeah, and our brands. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it obviously it works hand in hand with your brands to kind of get stuff out there, but that's never really felt like the motivation, which has been quite nice. It's always felt like a really nice standalone, Thing. Don't worry about that, Gareth. It's all right. I just, <laughs> I just, I just remember. Did you, did you buy me a beer? <laughs> <That's right>. um. <laughs> so uh, this weekend, I mean, is what's kind of like the um, almost like the the audience pick the matchup of the weekend? Is there any anything in particular that you as a fan are really really excited about? A kind of like not a sleeper fight, but a, a match that you're kind of more excited about that people might should be a bit more aware about mm, I think um, I, I'm looking forward to all the matches yeah I think Chris and uh, Marcin's going to be really good yeah Marcin helps because Chris Fishgar is mega tough and he has a really good submission game good guillotine and Marcin Held's awesome yeah uh, Marcin Held in the UFC yep. yeah I yep. so yeah Jazari looking forward to seeing her fight again because she's yeah. just non-stop like submission hunting yeah. machine um, I'm excited to see who who's going to get the who's going to get the belt from between Jake and Craig. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really good. And we've got two, we've got three women's matches all together. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. It? I mean, the UK generally has quite a nice hotbed for female talent. I think it's it's really nice to kind of see you know the likes of Leonie, Leonie and Fiona and Cole going to going to the Euros and smashing it and, uh, and doing really well. So it's nice to obviously Leonie's first hometown show as well. So I think, mm. she, I think it'll be. Regardless of the outcome tomorrow, I think it'll be a nice, very interesting match to watch. I think it'll be exciting, regardless of the result. Yeah. Um, with Craig Jones, were you aware of him before the ADCC, or were you one of the few that... I can't kind remember. Of when did he do EBI? That was after ADCC, wasn't it? Yeah, not long, but yeah. Probably no. I think... I can't remember. That, that ADCC was just such a strong appearance that it yeah. just sort of like... Any prior yeah, memory yeah. of him, it's a it. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, were sat, um, we were in the arena, I mm -hmm. think, um, because you know, it's like eight hours or something of watching, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were sort of a bit like, you know, just went off to get a drink or something, and then uh, just the whole place went 
wild and then we sort of looked up and realized that it just tapped lo uh, low yeah and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Whoa. and then a few hours later he tapped marilla yeah yeah and yeah, yeah. Like, holy shit yeah, yeah who's this guy i was i what obviously i watched it um on the saturday and kind of like i totally binge watched it all over the weekend and um i could see the i was kind of had like i had it on my telly and then i had the reddit bjj thread on my laptop and everyone was just kind of going, Craig Jones, Craig Jones, Craig Jones. And I was like, shit, trying to figure mm. out which, like, which map to watch and stuff. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was quite cool. It's 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 quite unheard of to, to have someone really appear like that, especially in the world that we live in now with social media. And mm. everybody's trying to chomp in at the bit to get their, their piece of the pie on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. So, for someone like that to come up and have a really in big impact, mm. I guess, apart from Craig Jones, the only other story big story out of ADCC was Gordon Ryan but obviously everybody yeah, knows who Gordon knew Ryan is in. already yeah. everyone's kind of was looking at him going fucking hell he's going to take some ankles home or, or whatever uh, all the way through it so it's mm. quite rare isn't it mm. um, the big, be a good matchup I think the styles between Jake and um, and him would, would, would be interesting yeah Jake was initially uh, reluctant just because I don't think he was sort of paying attention um, to what everyone was saying yeah and then we sort of went well no he's really legit have a look and, and at, yeah i think jake was worried that what you know nobody knows who this guy is which makes always makes a match risky if the other guy's like an unknown but yeah like we sort of persuaded him he's not unknown at all like now everybody knows who he yeah, is yeah everybody knows his name now in the jiu-jitsu world say Craig johns everyone goes yeah this is he fucking wiped everyone out so so yeah that should be good um and kind of plans for belts and stuff are there are you thinking about having one belt on at each Polaris? Are you allowed to say, I guess? Yeah, no, I think I think the plan is to have them all culminate at the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So and men and women's belts as well. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Two ladies' belts, under 55 and over 55. Yeah. I think featherweight, lightweight, middleweight. I can't remember if, uh, if we've decided on light heavy or the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Light heavyweight would be interesting. I think it's light heavy. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite nice to see the the, uh, the big boys go at it. I think sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, similar starts to why it's interesting with the UFC and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it should be good. And but uh, we'll, st we'll, st we'll still do the like mixed weight matchups and the kind of like just the exhibition if it's an exciting yeah, yeah. fight. Then yeah. it's an exciting match, and that, yeah. that's what is, does feel nice about it because you just got awesome matches, which you've done very well in the past. You know, we were talking earlier about Gary Tone and Rusma Palhares, which was insane mm. um, which you probably wouldn't get for a belt I still can't believe we got Minoa Man to fight yeah <laughs> yeah 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 um, that sort of went under the radar but it was Minoa Man that guy's a legend yeah 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 um, any I mean in terms of the at least the past ones any favourite matches the um, anything that really Gary, stands out Gary and Paharis yeah also Polaris 2 had loads of really good matches mm -hmm. Daisuke versus Shaolin yeah Shaolin's uh, beast, yeah, yeah Shaolin's like top whatever I don't know you know 10 of all time yeah and Daisuke was going sweep for sweep with him basically and then in yeah. the last like two minutes he gassed out I think because he was he was really jet lagged I'm not making excuses yeah yeah but you could just see he suddenly went Ugh. just dipped off the edge yeah yeah yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and Shaolin just yeah took advantage of it and to go with that you know someone like Shaolin with I mean for me even as an MMA fan like Shaolin's like one of the he's one of my favourite ever he's one of the kind of one of the earlier guys to do it um, but he's on like he's on another level I think so to kind of stand there like you say go sweep for sweep with him until you run out of energy is a pretty mm. mean feat in itself isn't it so mm. um, so yeah do you think you'll have Shaolin back oh, he was on the last one wasn't he yeah, yeah. definitely yeah Shaolin yeah. he's a beast wasn't he yeah good 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 um, so what's your day kind of look like on, on, on the Saturday itself I know you kind of run ragged from well from pretty much arriving at the hotel tonight Thursday night all the way through to the Saturday evening you're pretty much non-stop um, and on, I know everybody kind of has roles on the Saturday and stuff and people probably don't see you and what you do on the day on a Saturday but what, what would your day kind of look like because it seems obviously from outside looking in you kind of wake up and then you're off and well I do I don't actually I don't have a like in, in for the first few events I was uh, a floor manager yeah but i was a terrible floor manager I just okay. sat there like <laughs> trying to cue tone yeah and the referees and like listening to the 
truck, you know, listening to the broadcast. It's yeah. basically a TV broadcast. We didn't realize until like two weeks before the first show that we were basically doing a TV broadcast. Yeah, like a full... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We thought we were just streaming an event online, but it's like, no, this is a TV broadcast. You've got five cameras, you've yeah. got... And we're, oh, they were like, who's the director? Mm, director. <laughs> and they're like, you need a director. <laughs> oh. And yeah. then Ed Brown jumped in and saved the day. Yeah. Um, Who now look, he looks after everything with the UFC. No, no. Ed was Ed was, Ed was our director. Okay. Yeah, for the first so, like yeah, yeah five shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's he's involved now as well, isn't he? Not at the moment. No. All oh, right. Okay. We've sorry, kind yeah. of uh, given it all to one company now just all right. to sort of streamline things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he definitely saved our bacon on the first couple of shows. Yeah. I was being a floor manager, um, which was sort of fun. I get to sat sat right next to the stage and. Uh, yeah listening to the timings for the broadcast and trying to make sure everyone on stage is following those. Yeah. But then I was... I Which basically, is a hell of a job because yeah. if you look at the kind of breakdowns and the timings, it's like for broadcast stuff, it's down to like the second. Yeah, and then because everybody... everybody, I mean, the only person with any broadcast experience was Josh, the, the MC, the commentator. Yeah, Josh Palmer, yeah. So he knew what he was doing and then everyone else, it was like herding cats. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah... Um, so, but then I found out that a floor manager has a much wider role. They have to like literally manage the floor, the crowd. They have to manage all the extra, all the right. um, runners, and and I was just wasn't doing any of that. So yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah, um, <laughs> don't really have a set role. It's just like making sure everyone's all right and yeah. being like available. Yeah, scramble and Tatami have a group of really um, invaluable kind of like a no, not volunteers. Uh, an invaluable team of people that just make sure everything runs super smoothly yeah or fighters like make sure they're in the right place at the right time make sure they're ready to run on stage yeah and, yeah make sure they've got like food and water and yeah you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, i've run shows um a lot of festivals in my time i've done a lot of stuff from the, the music industry and um run a lot of kind of you know stage managed a lot of shows and and it's not easy to like you say make sure people are in the right place at the right time they've got everything they need that they're ready to go on so when it comes to that second that they have to switch on the ramp so yeah put the geese on and, and go yeah um, it's not an easy thing to do so no, yeah. that, a bunch of the scramble staff and a couple of the tatami guys as well i think a former doorman right in fact matt still is a doorman yeah so they've, yeah, they, yeah. they've got the they're used to like the the uh, and norman's a doorman as well norman is he the doorman yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've got their earphones on and they're like yeah yeah you know where are you i'm at yeah. the front door i'm at the back door. like they're, they're used to, to it. go yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 it's good it's Obviously, why they're, they're still part of the team now and they're still, still running yeah, the show. Pretty much the same crew from the first one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you still get a chance to uh, enjoy it as a fan now? Not really. No? No. Do you it's find yourself, do you, do you watch them back when you kind of, when it's all said and done? Depends if it went well or not. <laughs> 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 Some of them we don't want to, well, no, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. We, yeah, we watch it back. Yeah. We watch it back. But we always look at it like really critically and like see what we can improve. Yeah, you have to, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to enjoy something that you've created, I think. You're yeah, always no, it is. Look it back is. With the critical eye. Like I, I watched, I went to Metamoris. Yeah. And that was awesome because I wasn't working. I just sat there yeah. watching it. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. In um, LA, you were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Class. We were sponsoring Sakuraba. Okay, at that yeah, time. of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's another, yeah. that's a good story. <laughs> we, got, we got his front row tickets. Yeah. And sat there and, uh, yeah, that was a good party as well. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Did he get paid? Saku, yeah, yeah. He yeah, got paid a lot. It's all right then. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Certain people got paid a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, good on them. Maybe that's why he hasn't got any money to pay the rest. Yeah, I won't. No, that is right. that, yeah. but um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, um, Wayne's tomorrow. If, can you talk about any predictions for any of the matches? Can you obviously you don't want to be biased, but do you think anyone in there is going to do any any damage or? Um, I don't know. Uh, if I should say, yeah, mm. I don't know if I should. Have I think asked it'll that be question. interesting to see if J if Craig can uh, submit Jake because yeah. Jake's so durable and yeah. good at um, like uh, nullifying people. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see if AJ can beat Benson because yeah. he lost last time. Yeah, I think that'd be phenomenal. Yeah, that'd be Norgie. Yeah, we're gonna have to be catching them from falling off the edge of the stage. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ben, uh, uh, Benson's another great catch. Um, yeah, obviously from the UFC. Did well, did he approach you with interest? I'm trying or? to remember, we we spoke to him once before a long time ago. Yeah, and then um, so he's done obviously a lot of stuff in the US, a lot of grappling yeah. tournaments. And we stuff. just have a long list of people 
that every time a show comes around, we just go through the list. Are you interested? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Benson said, yeah. So that that will be a, a great match. I think. Yeah. A good match up for AJ as well. Yeah. Wrestler versus wrestler. Yeah. AJ is always always fun to yeah. have on the card. <laughs> yeah. You bring. I mean. It must be quite nice to have someone like that that does a lot on social media. Um, we all know about the Lloyd Cooper uh, stuff oh, yeah. last time, and he's still mentioning Lloyd this time. Still talking about um, Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, perhaps you, I have to give him that rematch. Yeah, um, I'm sure Lloyd wouldn't mind. Yeah, he's good. Did you, did you see him Facebook living yesterday? No, but I heard about him. Rogers, Jake Shields there with Jake. Yeah, yeah that was. <sighs> I mean, we. I was. You know, would have been. I wouldn't have minded if something had kicked off because they weren't officially under our sort of under your guys at that yeah, time yeah, yeah, yeah nothing yeah. to do with us yeah. <laughs> oh no that happened yeah. yeah yeah nice piece of piece of promo to cut yeah. for the UFC but, uh, that that live video never made it to his Facebook page so yeah weird yeah. well yeah. Yeah. I thought they I thought it just auto uploaded but it well the only time I've ever struggled with it or found other people struggled with it when there's been music on and they the kind of find the license mm. and then they'll, oh, could be. they'll automatically pull it down could be, but yeah. I don't know if there was music on it which is Jim or whether there uh, was music in the background yeah. right is that probably why then unfortunately yeah. for the rest of us because no I didn't see that would yeah, I like to <laughs> see some words exchanged by them too so um, do you think you'll ever put them two together AJ Jake? we've asked we've asked Jake's just not interested and yeah and, uh, I think AJ would probably do it again but yeah yeah Jake seems bigger than him a lot bigger fair big yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, but AJ is just pretty game full stop isn't he to yeah. kind of go with anyone at any weight he just we likes talked about his weight cut for ADCC earlier weren't we yeah oh, he looked a bit ghastly trying to convince us that that was his natural weight he looked like a <laughs> he looked like Skeletor yeah to think he was maybe trying to convince himself probably yeah <laughs> yeah yeah what, what was the biggest challenge when you were first trying to get Polaris off the ground I'm really interested in the history not the history it's only been around for four years but Kind of like the, the getting it off the ground. What was what was the biggest struggle in terms of hmm. convincing the UK into it? I guess four years ago, you know, jujitsu every year is getting more and more and more popular, um, and that's not to say it's going to get easier to promote because there's always challenges. Not full stop as a promoter, as someone who puts a show on. But was it a real struggle to kind of get that sub on the idea across to the English audience in the early days? It's difficult to convince people to actually like part with their money and sit down and watch a show yeah um because the first four shows were done on pay-per-view yeah and the other the other i think the other tough thing is uh nobody buys a pay-per-view until the night of the event yeah so we would yeah. go into an event with like 50 sales and we'd be like <laughs> <laughs> what's then, gonna happen yeah, yeah and then yeah. like yeah. it would start and it was you know yeah of course yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but um that was always pretty tense yeah i bet um, we have a lot of competition from other shows. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just try not to think about that too much. Just yeah. do, just do it ourselves. Yeah. I've always, well, in terms of competition, I guess as long as you put all the effort into the product you're delivering, instead of kind of focusing on yeah. the competition yeah. you're doing, then as long so, as the product's good, it'll yeah. always kind of work. You know Same I mean? with brands. Like if you spend too much time looking at what other people are doing, then you see some cool stuff and you're like, oh, you know. Yeah, just better to just sort of just get on with yeah. it. And, you yeah. can get distracted as well. There's so much wacky stuff, especially now with jujitsu out there. Um, there's a lot of clothing brands and a lot of, um, you know, I, I guess kind of everyone's trying to have a go. Um, it's so easy to start a brand as well. You can yeah, start a brand well, in a now. day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I c right now I could set up a big cartel, and yeah. just, like do up a design on an iPad or whatever, and just print off like thirty shirts, ready yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah two hundred quid, and then yeah, let's have a go. So. Um, it's harder to keep it going. It's easy to start it. It's very hard to keep it going. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I mean, like years ago, I started like a clothing brand for. Um, it was again like music based and and try to and I kind of started and I just went, um, yeah. I, I didn't really have the passion. I was in between jobs at the time. And I thought, yeah, fuck it. I'll I'll make a t-shirt company. And I went, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> no, it's it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. You know what popped into my head the other day, Gareth? Strike. You remember them? Do you remember all these like English companies that were around? No, I mean oh, I've I've know. been trained for five years, so okay. my introduction to jujitsu is, I guess, still fairly infant right. compared to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. You're still enjoying doing stuff for Scramble, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Scramble's good. Industry's changing a lot. Yeah, that's uh, over the since, yeah. like I say, since I kind of started right through from training MMA and then going into jujitsu and getting really interested in jujitsu and having I, I, the first thing that 
really interested me was kind of like the, the subculture of jiu-jitsu and um, obviously you've got Tatami, Scramble, who are both big companies, very good companies, but different in styles. And then you've got things like Shoyroll, and I was like, why the f- at the time I was like, why the fuck are people paying two hundred pound for for these things? So you know, I couldn't quite get my head around it until you know when you delve into any hobby, there's kind mm. of expensive things that people will pay for no matter what. We're lucky in a way, as, as I suppose, as a brand owners, we're lucky that it's a it's a sport where people are willing to pay. It's like it's like uh, like I don't know snowboarding or cycling as opposed to like I don't know karate or something where yeah I don't, I don't well, maybe there are like expensive keys in karate I don't yeah know. maybe yeah but in terms of brands I don't feel like there's that kind of no streetwear cool option in in karate yeah you, it's strange isn't it? it maybe speaks a lot about the people I guess the people that do get into jujitsu are probably a bit more subculture minded because jujitsu as a sport in itself um take away all the clothing companies and everything else it it's it's almost like the subculture of mma um although it created the mm-hmm. ufc technically as we know it it's still kind of like that cool thing where everybody knows about mma everybody knows what conor mcgregor i haven't spoken to people and they just go what's jujitsu yeah what what is get it bored of explaining it <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 of course yeah um so yeah so maybe that's why it's you can do the jobs that you do and, and create some nice clothes and stuff yeah so. but like in the beginning of uh, promoting the brand, it was all like forums and uh, you know, yeah. close like little communities. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Which is nice, isn't it? Yeah. And like I say, but it's it's growing at such a crazy pace and changing. Like I say, it's the combination of kind of technology, emerging technology, and jujitsu in itself just be getting more and more popular. Um, it must be quite hard, like I say, to keep up with it. Um, yeah, and the same with Polaris, I guess. Um, Hopefully, yeah. Well, we got, we got. Um, you mentioned Connor earlier. We got, uh, we did got some video with him on the last show because of Dylan. Yeah, and that just went bananas. We had like quarter of a million views in a couple of days just on based that on video. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then whenever we were talking about the show to anybody, and they didn't really know what we were talking about, we just mentioned Conor McGregor, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen that video on YouTube, and and for obviously everybody's kind of got an opinion on him, but for me. It, what he's done for the sport in terms of getting eyes on it is, is fantastic and he mm. can only be for me a, a benefit to combat sports in general because the more exposure it has then generally the more people are going to participate the more people participate in it it's better for everyone I guess yeah no I agree I agree I think he might have crossed a couple of lines of in his promotion of uh, like the Mayweather fight and stuff that yeah but um, yeah it's just all it's, all, it's all publicity for the sport in general, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, the, for the top of MMA. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for doing this. I know you shot for time, so. You should, you should ask Gareth about, um, if you want to do like a podcast about um, business and, you know, because yeah. Tatami's probably about 10 times bigger than Scramble is. Oh. So. <laughs>